so welcome back again and uh, we will continue uh, to use the beautiful Gauss law okay which I already applied in case of uh, a linear pencil of charge and also an infinite sheet of charge and we found the uh, value of the electric field at the distance r away from there. Okay? I'll recall that. But right now we are going to do a third exercise. Electric field will be a uniformly charged thin spherical shell, which I am taking over here. Okay? With a charge density equal to sigma. Sigma coulombs per meter square. Because this is spherical and this is then I choose and I draw a concentric spherical surface which I take as the Gaussian surface for a point P distant R from this which has the radius capital R. Okay? This is the position of the point P outside this shell. Okay? And then I'm taking the shell over here and a point inside the capital P now has been taken inside so this is the Gaussian surface concentric spherical okay and this is also a concentric spherical Gaussian surface okay to some of the things this is capital R this is small r and over here at this point P the uh, ds cap and the electric field are cap are same okay so because the distance of this surface from the origin is the same everywhere so uh, there is a kind of a secular behavior and the electric field all over the Gaussian surface is considered as same and because the charge is taken as positive charge on this shell therefore it will be pointing outside so that the E and DS they have uh, the same direction the theta is equal to 0 so I can write for uh, E dot DS at the point P is equal to E DS okay now for a point P outside where a small r is uh, greater than capital R flux phi I can write as E P the uh, value of the electric field over there into 4 pi small r square okay and the charge which is enclosed by this surface this is sigma into 4 pi r square because 4 pi r square is the uh, area of the spherical surface okay now to this we apply our beauty the Gauss law that is the flux is equal to charge enclosed upon epsilon naught okay therefore I can write that the charge enclosed EP into 4 pi r square is equal to sigma into 4 pi capital R square divided by epsilon naught so 4 pi 4 pi gets cancelled etc and I get expression like this EP is equal to sigma r square upon epsilon naught small r square okay now, as sigma capital R square is equal to Q upon 4 pi, okay, therefore if I substitute this value then EP turns out to be equal to Q upon 4 pi epsilon naught R square, look here, this is, if we consider that all the charge distributed over this spherical shell is concentrated at this center, okay, and the value is at uh, Q over here and it's put at the point center O then also we know that that the electric field at the spherical surface we are talking about is Q upon 4 pi epsilon naught R square <coughs> hmm? well of course if R the small r which is variable turns out to be equal to capital R so that if you are interested in the electric field just at the center 
I'm sorry, just on the uh, spherical shell over here, so that small r becomes capital R, then Ep at that point will be equal to Q upon 4 pi epsilon or not capital R square, okay, which I am not writing. I leave it to you. Well, in the second case, when I take the point P inside, the story is very short, very simple. R is smaller than capital R. So this is the spherical shell and inside there is a concentric Gaussian surface. Okay. So I simply say that the value of the electric field over here will be equal to zero. And then I have a big y. So in Q upon epsilon or this side that we have, actually within the confines of this Gaussian surface, there is no charge because all charge is distributed over the over the thin spherical shell and when the this charge on this side is equal to zero so that electric field which should be same everywhere that will also turn out to be equal to zero I'm not going to solve it for you and I leave it for you to solve it okay so the major thing is that there is a spherical symmetry and we obtain the results like that material now next I am going to take a spherical case where we have a charge density rho okay, which is equal to the total charge Q upon 4 by 3 what is that pi r q whatever small r capital r I'll just make it and then i'll let you know that over the whole of this everywhere there is charge and the density of the charge is uniform this is the case which is similar to the uh, earth in the case of gravitational one uh, when uh, I told you that the electric field, I'm sorry, the gravitational field as we go towards the center, it changes. So you can connect with that, but right now I'm going to talk to you about a distribution, volume distribution of charge, where the volume distribution of charge is uniform. Okay, uh, I'm just uh, getting astray from what the courses suggest, but I told you that I have something to discuss to you. For example, in the case of infinite sheet of charge, we found that the electric field is proportional to r to the power of zero. Then in the case of a linear distribution, the electric field was proportional to uh, this thing and uh, 1 upon r and in this case it is proportional to r square where that is uh, there is a spherical symmetry again okay. I'm going to talk to you about that so next item I'm taking again for a spherical symmetry the electric field due to uniformly charge is sphere Okay, and I take this as a sphere where all over the sphere the uh, density of the charge is rho. Radius capital R, total charge enclosed within this spherical ball uh, is plus Q. So the rho is equal to plus Q divided by 4 by 3 pi R Q, where uh, this is the volume of the sphere that we have of radius r. Okay. We have chosen 
a Gaussian surface which is concentric sphere of radius r like we did in the last time. In fact, this is the same uh, diagram that uh, I did draw. The only distinction is that I have put this thing. Okay. So this is the concentric Gaussian surface and this is the not the spherical shell but rather this is the sphere a sphere of charge of uniform charge density okay so it's a similar kind of a thing well because of the symmetry that we have the beautiful uh, concept of symmetry the electric field at the Gaussian surface is same all over okay so e dot ds will be equal to e ds as theta will be equal to zero like before no problem now the p is outside and r is greater than capital r okay so let me write e into 4 pi r square which is the surface area of the gaussian surface 4 pi r square is the surface area of the gaussian surface so e into so this is the total uh, flux okay and this is equal to q of 1 epsilon where q is equal to 4 by 3 pi r q multiplied by 4 doesn't matter so the thing is that the total q is contained inside and we are trying to find out the electric field outside this spherical body so it becomes equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught in into q upon r square which turns out to be equal to q upon 4 pi epsilon r square if r is equal to r. So on the surface of this body the value of the electric field that will be uh, radially outward it will turn out to be equal to this okay which is the same as if the total charge is concentrated at the center like before in the case of the spherical shell also. Now, next I am going to take the uh, point P inside the shell and that will be equivalent to what we did in the case of the uh, calculation of gravitational field. So I resume and this time I am taking the point P inside. This is our sphere of uniform charge density. This one is our Gaussian surface, which is a concentric Gaussian surface. Okay. The radius of this, where the point P is located, is small r, and this radius capital R as we do. Also, ER cap is the same as DS cap, the angle over here is equal to zero, and therefore EP is at the point P is radially outward. Okay, and I can write therefore the value of the phi on this uh, Gaussian surface is Ep multiplied by 4 pi r squared where 4 pi r squared is the area of the Gaussian surface spherical Gaussian surface now the charge which is uh, enclosed herein that is q dash I have taken this is 4 by 3 pi r q multiplied by the density, the volume density rho, which will turn out to be equal to 4 by 3 pi r q into capital small q divided by 4 by 3 pi r q. So 4 by 3 pi, 4 by 3 pi, they cancel and I get this equal to q r q, small r q divided by capital r q. And then I write the cos law, statement of the cos law. Then the total flux on the left hand side is equal to the total charge in close divided by epsilon naught. So I can write this Ep into 4 pi r square here as Q r cube upon r cube multiplied by 1 upon epsilon naught, which I can again write as. Uh, Ep is equal to qr cube upon r cube into 1 upon epsilon naught, okay, 
divided by 4 pi r square. Okay. So you can see that small r appears in the numerator also in the denominator. Okay. And when we cancel it out, it comes in the numerator as small r. Q upon 4 pi epsilon naught, r cube is all a constant. Okay. So we find that Ep is proportional to a small r. Okay. So as we, as the value of a small r increases from the center towards this, we find that the value is uh, increasing. And I have just shown that Ep is proportional to a small r and therefore there will be a straight line uh, according to y is proportional to x okay, up to the point capital R. Not beyond that, beyond that the value will come according to what I had done before and right now it is like this. Look here, it is very interesting that I have taken various cases and in this case the electric field has a proportionality with R. In there, there was the case of the sheet of charge where the proportionality E was proportional to R to the power 0. There was a the case where E was proportional to R raised to the power of minus 1 and there was a the case in spherical symmetry. This is for cylindrical symmetry and this is for spherical symmetry that E is proportional to R raised to the power of minus 2. So very interesting. You can relate. I leave it to you to uh, infer why it is so. But you can see that I am writing this proportional to r to the power of 1, r to the power of 1 minus 1, r to the power of 1 minus 2, r to the power of 1 minus 3. So this is how the variation goes and before I uh, wind it up for you, I will tell you that similar kind of thing was done in the case of the gravitational exercise where I said that this outer shell will not have any contribution. The contribution will be of the mass which is here and that is how we found again that kind of a proportionality for the gravitational field for the acceleration due to gravity at a point inside is proportional to R. In the case of a theoretically defined a spherical complete sphere of uniform charge density. So friends, that way we have come to an end of uh, this chapter and uh, before I leave you today, I will give you an exercise and I will ask you to do the exercise. When uh, the model of the atom was uh, presented, so there was a tiny, 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 very small uh, nucleus which had a positive charge. And about the nucleus, there was uh, there were electrons. And initially, it was considered that let these electrons, no electrons. At that time, we had no idea about the electrons, but we had the idea of, of negative charge, and uh, they thought that it may be concentrated all over the spherical surface. So you can see that there will be a positive charge over here and the equal amount of negative charge is distributed all over the spherical surface. So that is the beauty that is available in the books. And if you have time, if you have time and you must have time because you have to enjoy. And if you want to enjoy, then you have to uh, do something, that exercise and there you will find that a very interesting situation is there for the, for the uh, fictitious 
model of the atom. That used to be there. Thereafter, it was Rutherford model and uh, other things where we thought and we subscribed to a nucleus and then electrons going in shells and orbits around the nucleus so that the centripetal force is provided by the attraction between the negative electron charge and the positive charge inside the nucleus and many uh, orbitals and this and that they were discussed is still discussed in chemistry it's very useful but 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 in physics the modern picture is that the electrons are not in the orbits but they can be anywhere within the cloud of electrons so thank you very much we go to chapter 2 of uh, uh, this class 12th and we'll talk about things like uh, electrostatic potential and uh, talk about capacitors etc okay thank you very much